Welcome to St. John's Good Morning, or good whatever time of the day you are watching this worship with us. Here on the second Sunday of Easter season. Yes, Easter is a season, and so for the next several weeks we will be celebrating the resurrection, the most significant event for us as Christians, and the thing that most marks our lives. In this second Sunday of Easter, we are also uh, taking special notice that on the coming Wednesday, on April 22nd, it's Earth Day, and so for this particular Sunday, we are also celebrating the second Sunday in Easter with a focus and emphasis on the care of creation. Our vicar, Carolyn Brote, has a special interest in the theology around the stewardship of the earth, the care of all creation, and our role in that as human beings, God making us caretakers of the whole world. And so uh, we are delighted uh, that she is bringing the message. This uh, seminary student who is finishing up her studies to become a pastor is bringing the homily today, the, the message and the gospel proclaimed. Uh, and, and then afterwards at the 1015 coffee hour, so if you're around at that specific time on our Facebook page, there will be a Facebook Live event, and Carolyn will be hosting that uh, along with the members of St. John's who are on this care, this forming care of creation committee. So please join that special focus at 1015 that will be looking at uh, why these, these individuals uh, have this special focus of the care of creation as a core piece of who they are as Christians and why that's important for all of us to consider. I want to say a special thank you to this congregation uh, and to the staff and the leadership for a significant end to the Lenten season and Holy Week and Easter. Of course, we were thrown off our plan uh, by uh, the need to shelter in place, to stay at home caused by the coronavirus. But uh, we had a very significant uh, and memorable uh, sort of time together to ponder our faith. And I think uh, all in all, it was a wonderful time for us as a congregation. So, so I thank the staff, I thank the leadership, and I thank each one of you for being a part of this, uh, of this community, even if it's happening mostly from us making our way into your homes through uh, video and, uh, and other ways we are, are coming together as the people of God in that way. And, and please continue to support St. John's uh, with your tithes and offerings. And if you're new to us and have found us virtually, uh, we say the same thing we say if you were here on a Sunday morning, we want to get to know you. So find the links, uh, the new, to, new at St. John's links, and, and uh, a pastor will be able to be back in touch with you. And for all people of St. John's, if you need anything from the pastors or staff, please be in touch with us and also uh, find your way to continue to make your offerings that we can share in this life together. It is good to be here, people of God. Let us worship on the second Sunday in Easter and also for the care of all creation. Come, let us dwell in God's shelter. Let us dwell in God's work of art. Come because the earth is the Lord's and God's earth is our home. We live in God's world. We are not alone. We share this life with the heavens and the earth, with the waters and the land, with trees and grasses, with fish, birds and animals, with minerals and creatures of every form and with all our siblings. God declared creation good and entrusted us to care for it along with each other. Today, as we reflect on the marvels and wonders of creation, let us renew our commitment as good stewards of the earth. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seeth at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Arise, shine, for our light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We gather to rejoice in the creation of the world. Let us pray to the architect of all that is. O oh God, in your infinite compassion, you lovingly formed our planet and all that lives within it. You are the living God who sustains all life that is continually unfolding. And now may we open our ears to your continually unfolding word as you speak to us in new and vital and imperative ways. Amen.
The Holy Gospel According to John When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive it the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son, and that though that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace from God, the creator of the earth and of all living things and the breath of life. Amen. I cannot help but hear today's gospel in a new light, given the events of this past month. I too have sometimes felt like these disciples who were hiding away behind locked doors. This past month, we've all had to adapt to new living arrangements adult children and our grandchildren moving in, multiple adults all working from home, school age distant, school age children with distance learning, a loss of daily human contact, loss of employment, and those who are putting themselves at risk to provide essential services. No matter who we are, we are all affected one way or another by the pandemic and are all doing our best to continue living. Some of us behind closed doors and some of us not, as we collectively wait for the virus to run its course. We have all been affected and we together are experiencing something historical. My husband and I have been empty nesters for several years, and we found our daughter and her two babies moving in with us while she waits for her new job that was beginning April 1st. Now the start date is to be announced once the shelter in place orders are lifted. 
Going from a quiet home of two adults to a home with babies under the age of three has taken some work. We've had to get baby locks, baby gate, high chair, booster seat, walker, and a training potty that looks like a penguin. As each need arose, we made a plan so we could go get the item and come home with minimal exposure to others. During one of our trips, I noticed how very clear the sky appeared, and I could clearly see the buttes, which are normally fuzzy and covered with haze. This had me wondering about our air quality and if it had improved because of less commuting. I then read something that said other parts of the world were showing less air pollution and less air particulates. A Newsweek article said that scientists are witnessing a big difference in air quality in those regions that have been significantly affected by COVID-19, such as China and Italy. As industry, aviation, and other form of transport grind to a halt, these countries are showing a strong corresponding reduction in nitrogen dioxide by 35 to 40%. This strong reduction is a first. Scientists believe that this pandemic is also likely to have a significant impact on other environmental factors, including the emission of greenhouse gases, wildlife, and waterways. The Venice canals, which are known for murky and polluted water, appear to be unusually clear. And closer to home in Yosemite, the wildlife is coming out of hiding and reclaiming the valley floor because our human footprint has diminished. I have noticed that on my morning walks in Miner's Ravine, I hear more birds. I'm not sure that there's actually more birds, but that we are experiencing less noise pollution so we can actually hear the birds that are there. One Facebook user, Elisabetta Capriali, who posted pictures of the clear canals in Venice wrote, maybe this virus is Mother Earth putting us in a timeout for a while while she cleans up the mess we've made. This coming Wednesday, we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And some of the news about the Earth's healing during this pandemic brings me great hope. As Lutherans, our confessional sources and our love of God and neighbor ground us in our faith and how we should relate to the earth and all living things. Luther would say that we are called to be curved outward and that that outward curve focuses us on our neighbor, which includes care for the earth and all living things. Bishop Eaton for the 2018 Earth Day stated that as people of faith, we are called to live in right relationship with creation and not exhaust it. 50 years ago, 20 million Americans, that was 10% of the US population at the time, took to the streets, college campuses, and hundreds of cities to protest environmental ignorance and demand a new way forward for our planet. Earth Day was a unified response to an environment in crisis that included oil spills, smog, and rivers so polluted they literally caught fire. The first Earth Day launched the modern environmental movement. Today's gospel resonates with me down in my soul because I have more than a little of Thomas's personality. I usually understand something more thoroughly when I can understand it both intellectually and have a personal experience with that teaching. When I was raising my daughter, Caitlin, the film Aladdin was released and the blue, sassy and insightful genie was played by Robin Williams. There was some quick inspirational message that played frequently on TV with the genie saying, great minds think for themselves. Thomas, in today's gospel, is asking for nothing less than to have the same experience as the other disciples. 
to know within his own soul from his personal experience that Jesus died and was resurrected and was walking among them. Thomas is asking for a solid sign in a moment of crisis, fear, and vulnerability. Once he experienced this sign, he is the only one to declare that Jesus is God and the Lord of his life. I believe that's what we are waiting for now, a solid sign because we are in a moment of crisis and vulnerability. It is in this moment of crisis, vulnerability, and fear that Jesus speaks and offers a message of comfort twice to the disciples gathered, saying that everything has changed with these words peace be with you. And in one translation, the second time Jesus says, may each one of you be at peace. Hmm. To be at peace, something that may be in short supply for some of us after a month of sheltering in place. Finally, Jesus breathes on them, giving those gathered the Holy Spirit and commissioning them for work of the church. We also receive this Holy Spirit and commissioning in our baptism when we light the candle and say, may your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give God the glory. This story is not one of doubt, but one that reminds us of the amazing message of Jesus who breaks through locked rooms and through the limits of time and space. Jesus comes to us as he came to the first disciples right in the midst of our fear, pain, doubt, and confusion. He comes speaking peace, breathing into our anxious lives the breath of the Holy Spirit. Jesus keeps sending us out of our safe, locked rooms into a world that, like us, desperately needs his gift of life and peace. So as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, we have a chance right now to reset ourselves in relationship to all creation. May we leave our safe locked rooms to experience firsthand God's majesty and word through nature. May we answer the call as people of faith to love our mother earth. Amen. In celebration of nature and all that you have done for creation, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of great big skies, open wide the doors of our hearts and communities, encouraging inclusion and welcoming all people who worship in all different ways. Guide us in the ways of unity and harmony so that we may all share your love with the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of beauty, bless roaring rivers, blue lakes, quiet streams, and vast seas. Watch over deserts, plains, mountains, and all the creatures that inhabit them. Encourage us to see the grace in all your creation, and empower us to work for its care, so that all living things may thrive. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of thick fogs, in a time where the right answer might not seem clear, guide leaders and authorities to make good choices that help and protect all people and places. Encourage governments to work for the good of the earth and its creatures great and small. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing rains, help those who are sick, injured, grieving, or in pain. Be with those feeling isolated and those in fear. Help everyone to find the support they need. Today we pray especially for the needs and pains of Courtney, Kari, Joe, Martin, Donna, the Fortney family, Gilbert, Ed, Shannon, Kathy, Aaron, Lena, Alin, Shirley, Tom, 
all our Stephen ministers and those in their care and those we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of gentle breezes, bring relief to health care workers, store employees, male personnel, bus drivers, teachers, parents, and all working hard in these difficult times. Help to provide and encourage safe practices and protect those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, thank you for the gift of new life. Today we rejoice with Ali and Joe Reno at the birth of their son, Abel Benjamin Reno. Watch over them and all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of tall trees, help us grow roots in our faith, encouraging us to praise you in worship, in nature, and in all aspects of life. Lead us on paths to do your will and preserve your creation and word for all to experience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving thanks for all that you have created, O God, we place all for whom we pray into your loving care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and your household. At this time, um, an important part of our worship always is the offering of who we are back to God, and that includes our time, talents, and treasures. Uh, please see the instructions that follow in the worship video on how to make your offering to St. John's. And especially we wanna say, the, if you're new to St. John's, finding us in this virtual way, the most important offering you can make for us is to go back and find the Welcome to St. John's link and provide us with your name and email address or a cell phone so we can be back in touch with you. Sings my 
salvation and lead me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim. Let us pray. God, creator of the earth and all living things, maker of the sky, the air, and the breath of life, all that you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth everything necessary from the earth to nourish our bodies and our souls so that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks to God for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring, you are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Praise to you for the waters of baptism and for your word that saves us in this sacrament. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry up our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have gathered here in communion with you, O Christ, through this virtual portal of time and space. While we are not able to partake of the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament, we join in prayer to express our longing in this time of fasting from communion. Together, let us pray. O Christ, I believe that you are present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the full sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were there and unite myself wholly to you. Help me to remember that nothing in heaven or on earth can separate me from the love of God through you. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen, share this good news, and live God's love in the world. Mm -hmm. 